I'm Armanda Familetti. Tonight's show is about our local hero, Sybil Luddington, and the man who knows her best. Welcome, Vin DeQuino. Well, thank you. So, Vin, you've written the book on Sybil Luddington. I Luddington. sure have. In fact, you've written four books on yeah. Sybil Luddington. And two adults and two children. Two, and what's the most recent book? The most recent is Patriot Hero of the Hudson Valley, The Life of and ride of Sybil Luddington. And we have a cover of that book. Yes, so and that, that book up. was released less than a week ago. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Actually, a little more than a week ago. Okay, so while they're getting the picture of the book, yep. <laughs> which is coming up in a second, um, there it is. Yep. Now, uh, that's a paperback, right? Yes, and that's an interesting photo on the book because yeah. the woman third from the left is... Anna Hyatt Huntington, the woman who created the statue when she was 90 years old. So third from the left. Yep. So she's not the pillbox one... hat. Oh. There you go. All right. So it's uh, the one in the middle of the three ladies. Yeah. Okay. No, the middle of the four ladies. The... Okay. Well, anyway, okay. she's on that anyway, book cover yeah. somewhere. <laughs> and she was a sculptress. And yes. And she created that statue. Where is that statue? That statue is on Lake Lanida in Carmel, New York. And Sybil's story is an interesting one. I was on my way to school when I saw a sign that said, Sybil Luddington rode by this spot in 1777 uh -huh. to help repel the British in Danbury, Connecticut. Well, I had no idea who Sybil was, and I had no idea what happened in Danbury. As it turns out, Sybil is a first responder from the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. Well, she's Be the Paul Revere of yeah, Putnam County. And, yes, and she's a first responder. What happened was, one night uh, in April, April 26th, 1777, a messenger came to the door. They were sitting by the fire. Whose door? S uh, Colonel Luddington's. It's because her dad. Her dad, and Cur Colonel Luddington had 400 men. And he was in the militia? In the militia, which is volunteer. So when the messenger banged on the door, he said, we need your 400 men. And the colonel said, what? My men are militia. They're farmers. They're on their farms. It's Sunday night, so 9 o'clock. So interrupt you. Where'd this man come from? He came from Connecticut. And even though the colonel was from New York, it was only like 20 miles uh -huh. to Danbury. So he banged on the door and he said, look to the east, and they could see the red skies. And 2,000 men, General Tryon of the British Army, who, who was, by the way, a former officer that the colonel was under when he was with the British before he switched over to okay. the Americans, came up through Connecticut, 2,000 men. These are British men. British men, and they burned Danbury, or at least parts of it. Destroyed houses, killed General Why'd Luther. Why'd they do that? What was in Danbury that they wanted? Supplies by gazillions. There okay. were barrels of molasses, flour, sugar, rum that they got into a little bit. Uh, and jackets, shoes, mm -hmm. just all kinds of supplies. So it was devastating. They needed someone quickly. There was no one to send. The militia was on the farm. So, 16-year-old Sybil had to... Who's she Sybil? Had, Sybil was daughter? the colonel's daughter. Oldest the daughter. The oldest daughter. She's 16 years old. Just turned 16 three weeks before the ride. Basically 15. Got on a horse and went riding through the countryside. When she got back home, she... The men had already gathered. So let me back up. She went riding through the countryside to alert the colonel's militia. To get over to the parade to go, grounds. Okay. So that they could leave in the morning and go to help. The only go problem to, is... Go to help the Revolutionary Army who's fighting in Danbury. In Danbury. And by the time they finally got there, Tryon knew that men were coming in all directions. General David Wooster... General Goselic Silman and a guy you may have heard of, Benedict Arnold, all were on their way. He knew that. He got nervous. Tryon got nervous, said, we're out of here. Gathered his men, and instead of a battle in Danbury, it became a battle in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. David Wooster was killed, and the result was they chased Tryon back to the sea. 
So because of the 400 militiamen that... And Simple all money. the Connecticut men. Okay. So it wasn't just the oh, okay. New Yorkers. It, the men that came in from all different Connecticut directions. Connecticut militia as well. But New York certainly did help. And my understanding is that Tryon's men were mostly near Campo Beach, which is today near Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, so th they may not have been directly in the Battle of Richfield, but they helped as they chase the men to continue and get them onto their ships. Okay, so did now, we win the Battle of Ridgefield? We did not, and that'll come up in a minute, because what happened was, remember, the Battle of Danbury had already happened. He was already on his way back. He did his mission, and all they did was mm -hmm. kept helped him moving. Him. Yeah, okay. helped to chase him. So that's the story I know, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm writing a book. I need to tell her a story, so I wrote a book called The Call to Arms. Okay, and we have uh, the yep, cover of we that have that book. cover. So I wrote a book called The Call to Arms. When I wrote that book, an amazing thing happened. What year did you write that book? I wrote that book in 2000. That's when it was published. But from 97 to 2000, I researched. Three years it took me because there was one paragraph that kept being repeated over and over again. After her famous ride, Sybil married her childhood sweetheart, Charles, I mean, uh, Henry, or Edmund, or Edward, depending on the article, mm -hmm. who was a hero, uh, who was a <laughs> lawyer. He might have been a hero, I know, too. really. He, well, he was. He was a hero. Who was a lawyer in Catskill, New York. Uh, she had six children, four boys and two girls. Her son was a hero in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Wrong, 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 Okay, wrong. so let me back up a little because I want to make sure I show all of the covers of all right. your, the books that you've written yep. about Sybil. And there yep. are four all together. Yep. So, so we just saw two. So this is a children's book that's really a condensed version. It's kind of version. a YA, right? Yeah. And well, yeah, kind of a YA. This is for like middle school. Yeah. Uh, and the idea was to give a book to children to tell Sybil's story doesn't have a lot of the detail and the sources and resources mm -hmm. of the first book. And then there's another book that you wrote for small Yeah, this was children. a fun book. This is a book of Sybil and her six grandchildren. At the time I wrote this, I had no idea who the six children were and what became of them. Okay. I now do. Now you know. I now know. Okay, so... Um, so, so what happened so was... So let's go to the errors. Yep. You so, said wrong, wrong, yep, wrong. Yep. Why, All those why? errors were wrong. So now, what I needed to do... Look, there's yep, them. So what I needed to do was I needed to go back. After 20 years, I said, it's time to revisit. Oh, my God. All the errors that I found Now, how were did back you find again. these errors? How come you found oh, them and the other folks didn't? Because I was able to find pension papers in Washington, D.C. You went to Washington. What? Oh, I sure did. I went to Washington. I went to Unadilla and Catskill so many times... People thought I lived there. You know, they'd, they'd say, hello, hi, Vin, you know, and they're like, where's this guy live? You know, so I did some serious research for three years, and these are some of, go back to... Yeah, let's see number yeah, one again. Go back to that number was, one again. Great. So Sybil was not born in Fred, Fredericksburg, New York, where she lived with her family until she was 23. That's not true. Not true. What happened was she was actually born in Connecticut, and then they went okay. to New York. That's where her father was actually from. Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, Can I just say that Fredericksburg, does? there is no more Fredericksburg. There is no more Fredericksburg. It's Patterson. Patterson. So okay. where she, incidentally, is buried today. Okay. Keep going. So then uh, th when you look at some of the articles, it said she married Henry or Edward or Edmund with a U. Uh -huh. And she married neither one of those Did three. Did she marry an Ogden? She married E-D-M-O-N-D, -E and that's on the grave. Okay. And yet people ignored that, even though the grave has been there since 1839. And the grave is in Patterson. And it's in Patterson. Uh, her husband was not a lawyer in Catskill. He was actually <laughs> a farmer and a tavern keeper. Uh, Sybil did not marry her childhood sweetheart. She got married at 23 years old after she helped her mother raise 11 of her 12 children. Sybil did... Uh, not mother of six. She was not a mother of six, four boys and two girls. I was able to prove that there was an error. 
But how, how many it, kids did she have? One child. <gasps> and guess how many kids he had? Six. Four boys, two girls, and guess what he did for a living? He was a lawyer. He was a lawyer. Ah, I see how they these things switched get. names and threw off historians Sloppy for years. Lobby research, I'd yeah. say. Go back to the mistakes. <laughs> and uh, her son was not a hero for trying to save women and children. The switch was her grandson, who was a hero, okay. not her son. Today, and, So and what war was that, Fort Riley? He, Fort Riley, it wasn't really a, 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 a war. It was creating a fort, uh, Fort Riley in Kansas, okay. so the Indians. to fight the Indians okay. more than uh, anything else. But he okay, was in several battles. Let's go back. And let's go back again to the arrows. And finally, Ludingtonville, New York. Now, it was not named in honor of a ride. It was Ludington in the 1850s. So why all these errors? Go to part two. So tell me about Ludington while we're waiting for that slide. Ludington was named for Colonel, Colonel Ludington because he owned the property. Okay. And very common in those days, they would name little hamlets after the people who owned them. She did not die at 78 years old, but mathematicians said she was born in 61 and she died in 1839. What would that make her? Okay, but she 78. died at, she died at 77. She died before her birthday. Okay. So she died at 77 and 10 months. Uh, she did not ride through Kent, Connecticut. We have a photo that you're going to see that yeah, we'll talk on. about that. And the Patriots did not defeat the British. We have a photo that talk about Wait, that. Well, hold on. Somewhere it said that the Patriots defeated the yes. British. How You're did gonna... they get that wrong? Wait till you see it. And I don't okay. know how they did. Let's but let's that, go to the next slide. Let's keep slide. the slide up. Oh, wait, wait. Keep it up for a second. Her name is it appears on the cover of, the cover of this book. Oh, she was not a child patriot. I discovered that a replica of the statue on Lake Lanida, yeah. was in Washington, D.C., at the DAR headquarters. We're going to see and that. And I said, oh, my God, I need to see that. Well, when they sent me the photo, wait till you see what I discovered. Okay. So then uh, her name, as it appears on the cover of this, this book, is not the way she herself spelled it. There is a whole history in my new book mm -hmm. on her name. First mention of her ride was not in 1880. You're going to see that now... With my new venture of writing a new book, I uncovered family treasures. Okay. So flip. Let's see the next slide. So I think the okay. Look this at is this again. Something that's wrong about poor. The daughters siblings. of the American Revolution in the 1970s created a series of medals to honor the great women of the American Revolution. D A R made a medal. Uh, medal number 20 for Sybil Ludington. On the front of it, there's Sybil on a horse with an unidentified patriot watching her. And the back of the medal says, Sybil Ludington, she volunteered to ride alone through the New York countryside to muster her father's regiment. Her mission was crucial to the Patriot victory at Danbury. Oh, jeez. Oops. <laughs> there was no Patriot victory at Danbury. And I can't believe the DAR got that so wrong. Well, her entire life is marked by error. Now watch the next one. The next one's even more mind-boggling. Okay. The stamp. They make a stamp in 1961, a United States postal stamp. On the front, they call her a contributor to the cause. On the back, it says, riding through the Connecticut countryside. Uh, Oops, she went through the New York countryside. Even the United States Postal Stamp. So who was responsible error. for all these mistakes? What really happened was that in they, those days, they didn't have the Internet. So, But wasn't there a historian? Well, well yeah, but th you, you, the stamp one is simple. Who did she try to save? The people of Danbury in Connecticut. Guess what? There's a Kent, Connecticut. So whoever did it saw, oh, Kent, Connecticut. Okay. So they As assumed, to Kent, right, Kent, Putnam New York, County. which is what she did. She okay. wrote through Kent, New York. So it was a simple mistake. Okay. You know, so, uh, and 
Same I'm thing never going to trust a stamp again. Well, and the DAR assumed that there was a victory, but it wasn't. The, when General Tryon came through, he burned all the supplies. By the time they caught up with him, he was out of Danbury. There no was victory. no da There was no Danbury, and there was certainly no victory in okay. Danbury. So, uh, not so, for the Patriots. So let's. We, time is a Russian. So let's talk about what you discovered. Now you discovered some stuff at the archives yeah. in Washington yeah. D.C. Oh yeah, pension papers. No, well, what about the letters? Yes, when she wait, when she was seventy-seven years old, I found out that she. We have a slide of the pension. Well, well, she filled. Uh, the the pension. Not not paper. that one. Yeah. So what happened was. There it is. No. That's something else. No, it says Go civil back. pension yes, rejection letter. That's a rejection letter. That comes at the end of the talk. Stop uh, rushing me, Armanda. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a long talk. <laughs> so, so what happened was there were errors. These errors were making me nuts. So I decided that I had to go back and every... Every time I looked, even right today, if you Google Sybil's name right now, all those errors we just reviewed are coming up again. Sure, because what's so, on the Internet stays right. on the Internet. And they made me nuts. So worse than that, after I found all those errors, there were four things that kept coming up that blew me away. One, Sybil is a myth, a legend. She never existed. Two, her father was never involved in the Danbury affair. Three, the battle was insignificant. So there was really no purpose for the ride. And four, she never rode. I said, wrong. Got me on my feet, got me furious. I went back to the drawing board. Well, now, Flip, and here I went to the New York Historical Society okay. because they also said that Martha Lamb, who in my first book, the first mention of the ride was 1907. In 2012, they discovered a book. By digitizing a lot of these old books, they found out that Martha Lamb, a famous historian, wrote about the ride in 1880. Okay. So a lot of these naysayers said, all right, well, 1907 it's still isn't... It's years Yeah, after. so they said, you know, it's, so it's better. It's 1888, 1880, however... No sources. So Martha she, Lamb was a great historian. She was a great historian. But she didn't note her sources. She didn't note her sources. So <laughs> naysayers said, get out of here. With no sources, we're not taking it. Okay. We don't care. She could have made it up. Okay. They also said that William Pelletro, history of Putnam County, talked about the Ludingtons. He never gave any sources. He talked about the ride? Right. So that no. But he did talk about the colonel, and he talked about the family, and how gave could no he sources. leave out the ride? And I know how could he, especially since wait till you hear. So I said, uh, I have to get that straight because naysayers. Right. So I went to New York Historical Society to find Martha Lamb's notes. Okay. I go there, and the head of manuscripts and I start being friendly, and he said to me. So you're looking for Ludington information? I said, yeah. He said, why don't you look in the Ludington family papers? I said, what? He said, the <laughs> Ludington family papers. He had a box of letters from Sybil's nephew in 1854. Okay, not let's see the 1854 so letter. Let's go look at the letter. Wow. And this letter from 1854 is a letter to a Mr. Henry Deming from Danbury, who is going to be an orator for a celebration of a statue for General Wooster, who was a mason. And they're going to create a statue in 1854. He writes a letter in this letter clearly. Describes the whole ride. Describes how Sybil saved her father. Wow. So this is now the first mention of the ride. And it okay. goes all the way back to 1854. You know who wrote the letter? The colonel's grandson, Sybil's brother's son. Her nephew. Her nephew. So, amazing. So it brings us back. He talks about the ride. He talks about how Aunt Sybil mounted a horse. He talks about how Aunt Sybil saved her father's life. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I thought that was amazing. I said, I did it. Yes, there's the proof. Turns out that Charles Henry Ludington, the grandson, has a sister who's older. Okay. Now, Charles and his... Let's see that letter. Yep. So here's... Now, I call it Aunt Laura, even though it's her niece, because she wrote a letter to Charles's daughter. Okay. What happened was that these Luddingtons all got together, especially Charles and Louis S. Patrick, who is the son of his aunt's, the son of his aunt. Mm-hmm. So he's like second cousin. What le- what uh, so what year is this letter? So the, well, hang on to that for a second. Okay. So what happens is the two of them, the cousins, decide they're going to get the information they need from the L- Ludington legacy. Okay. They create a form and they send it out to all the Ludingtons. Oh, okay. And they say, "Give us information." Well, his sister, his older sister, says, oh, okay. So when she gets the letter from the niece, she writes the niece back, and she says, yes, I was at the family reunions. Now, I can't read that from Mm -hmm. here, but I'm telling you what it says is that she's at the family reunions with Sybil. Wow, Sybil's... And Sybil recounts to Laura, Laura Ludington Hustis, she recounts to her the ride, and the saving the father. So Aunt Laura writes back all the things she remembers that Aunt Sybil told her. Now, this letter isn't until, uh, I think it was uh, 1890. It was Mm -hmm. many years later, but the only reason it's many years later is because nobody asked her. So when they finally did ask her, she sent them a letter. Part of what's in that letter is what was used in the memoirs, which incidentally also has no sources. What memoirs? So, Whose memoirs? Did Sybil write a memoir? In 1907, Charles and his other sister, Lavinia, paid a biographer to write oh. the memoirs of Colonel Henry Ludington. That's how we found out about the ride, supposedly. And... Uh, the other cousin, not Charles, uh, Louis Patrick, wrote an article for the Connecticut Magazine, and his article describes the ride. Okay. But that's, again, 1907. And that's really the first time the general public y- yep, knew there was right. Sybil Ludington so, and she And that's wrote. why they said, come on, it's over 100 years later, who cares? It's not true. Okay, well, what about Miss Lamb? So cared, then we right? were able to find out that Miss Lamb was actually before that. Now we find out that Miss Lamb was given the information by the people who gave it to Willis Fletcher Johnson, mm-hmm. who wrote the memoirs. Now, when we look here, oh my God, it's a mind blower. On the top of the sketch that Miss Lamb published, we have a note. From Charles, it says to Martha Lamb, seventeen, uh, I mean eighteen seventy-eight. Her article was published in eighteen eighty. Here's the source. We have like two minutes left. Oh, so get out of here! I know. I'm telling you, it goes fast. I know. So let's look at a few more of yeah. the slides. Go to the slides, have, and I'll just very you briefly tell, tell you that here's what, what happened. At. Okay. This one. Now, where is that? I that is in Washington D.C. Where? I call them to find out if this. Oh, where in Washington? It, it's in the headquarters of the D.A.R. Okay. But the C.A.R. Children of the American Revolution rented space rented these, they rent space, and they put an exhibit. I asked them to send me a photo. Oh, my God, three of my books are at the base of the statue. And, the, and that's the and stu- it, uh, and replica. And it describes the ride. A replica of the statue. That's a replica of the Clint statue Ida. and a painting of Anna Hyatt Huntington creating the statue. So I have become part of the history in the museum. Okay. Why is this essential? Because the DAR is denying Sybil as a patriot because they said they did not have enough 
proof of the rye. Okay, so you're going back Hopefully, to the DAR. I'm going back to the D DAR and say, look, here's Aunt Laura's letter, man. Okay. Uh, so keep going. Let what's, what else? Oh. This is an envelope explaining that Pelletro. Pelletro he, again? Who's that? Pelletro is the uh, person historian? who wrote history of Putnam County. Naysayers said, yeah, well, if she was so important, why didn't Pelletro cover it? Good question, because in the sketch that he gave her, the ride is mentioned. He left it out. He didn't get the recognition she deserved, and she's still not getting it, even with the DAR, because they have very strict rules, but their rules are based on military documents. Women were not allowed to be soldiers. Finding military document on the person that alerted other people on the ride isn't going to happen. Okay, with one minute left. Oh man, I hate. There's so much. Hold on. So, if people want to know more, with one minute left, read you, the book. Read the book and go see some of your talks. And yeah. we have a slide of I'm where all over the place. you are going to be speaking. And this only goes to May 11th. Yeah. So, you, but you're booked through when? Oh yeah, I am booked right till October. Okay, so uh, go on your website. Go on the website. You'll find it. My website is vtdequino.com, uh, and I have a list of all the places. There's several places that haven't been here. This coming week, I will be in Lake George at Fort right. William Henry. It's top of the list. Yeah, because uh, her father fought there. Uh, Colonel Luddington. Colonel Luddington. So a whole lot more information. I am going to be doing a show. Uh, on my own show. That's right. You have your one own on one. Show. Let's talk writing, and I'm going to be talking about a lot of things that we were not able to cover here. Armanda, thank you for this opportunity. Sure. Sybil deserves to be given the credit that she should have. She was a hero. She is what great Americans are made of. Okay. Let uh, me just interrupt because we got to go. Hurry up. But if you want to see. <laughs> That show and yep. all the other shows that you do one on one, yep. you can go to your YouTube. Yep. Uh, v, v, again, VT DeQuino, YouTube, one on one. And I've done 140 something shows. Uh, next week, I'll be, I'll be doing a show specifically on Sybil. And who are you going to talk to? Me. One on one <laughs> with Sybil Luddington. All right. <laughs> I hope you can fit it all in. I hope it's so, too. It's a fascinating story. Thanks, yeah. Vinny, Thank for you. coming. A, a pleasure. Thanks for doing this for Putnam County. Uh, and, love it. Uh, thanks to the viewers who watch and the crew.